Welcome to Newsday on the BBC. I'm Sharon Jeet Lail in Singapore. The headlines. I'm Kasia Madeira in London, also in the programme. Live from our studios in Singapore and London. Well, good morning. It's 8 a.m. here in Singapore, midnight in London and 1 a.m. in the Polish city of Katowice, where just a few hours ago, the United Nations gave a stark warning about climate change. Patricia Espinoza opened the latest gathering a call to try to find a solution to the problem by telling delegates that the threat posed to humanity by rising temperatures has never been worse. Have a listen. A tough message from uh, the United Nations there, but it seems it isn't necessarily getting through. Cutting back on the use of fossil fuels like oil and coal is seen as vital if we want to reduce emissions which contribute to climate change. But in Poland, the host for this summit, that's just not happening. Our environment correspondent David Shukman reports. Let's take a moment to have a look at some of the day's other news stories. China's President Xi Jinping is making the most of his trip to Argentina for the G20 summit by extending his visit to sign some trade deals. The Argentine president, Mauricio Macri, was once again his host. The two leaders shook hands again just two days after they exchanged similar formalities. Now, that meeting failed to reach agreement on key issues, but Mr Xi and his host seem to be happy with their own arrangements. Also making news today, President Trump's unique approach to diplomacy is in the spotlight. Now, how is this for a story of lost and found? This couple just there, this is John and Daniela. They're a couple from the UK, and this is shortly after John actually proposed to Daniela in Manhattan. But disastrously, this engagement ring fell down a grate. The couple then had to return to the UK, thinking that it was lost, never to be returned. But the New York Police Department saw that particular video, then recovered the ring before issuing an appeal on social media and hoping to reunite it with its own. John and Daniela have now come forward. They will be getting that ring back, and I'm pleased to say in plenty of time for their wedding. Now, the US and China have been exchanging ever-increasing tariffs on their trade war uh, as that gathers pace, but the dispute has now been put on hold after a meeting between Donald Trump and Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the G20 summit. Well, earlier I spoke to uh, Amy Zhuang. She's the chief analyst for Asia at the financial services group uh, Nordia. And I asked her uh, whether it was a win-win agreement for both countries. Amy Yuan Zhuang there speaking to Sharon Jeet a little bit earlier. Now let's turn to Europe. A huge clear-up operation has been taking place in Paris after the worst civil unrest in France for several decades. More than 400 arrests were made as protesters, calling themselves the Yellow Jackets, clashed with police around some of the city's most famous landmarks. They want President Macron to scrap his increased taxes on fuel, something that he's adamant he will not do. Lucy Williamson reports. Well, you're watching Newsday on the BBC, still to come on the programme. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Newsday. I'm Sharon Jeet Lail in Singapore. And I'm Kasia Madeira in London. Our top story is this hour. The... Let's take a look now at some of the front pages from around the world. We start with the uh, South China Morning Post, which is also leading with that story that we've been covering. And that's the meeting between China and uh, the US at the G20 summit. They report on President Xi and President Trump agreeing a 90-day truce to their trade war. Well, no surprise, the Straits Times also features the meeting, describing a global sigh of relief at the outcome, but it's also touching on Saturday's violent protests in uh, Paris, which it says were the worst France has experienced in decades. And the Japan Times has also got the Xi-Trump uh, meeting on its cover, and this time warning that uh, Japan is now in President Trump's crosshairs, and that's after he agreed to that trade war ceasefire with China. It also looks at the G20 meeting between France's President Macron and Japan's Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe, and looks at how the arrest of Renault and uh, Nissan car executive uh, Carlos Ghosn in Japan could potentially put a strain on relations between the two countries. Well, that brings you up to date uh, with uh, some of the papers. Kasia, what are the stories sparking discussions online? Oh, Sharon Jit, for boxing fans, there was one story, the one must-see fight this weekend in Los Angeles. 
Now, Australians have a reputation for being rather fond of alcoholic drinks, but it seems that claim might not be rooted in reality, at least not if you look at the official figures, which uh, suggest consumption has fallen to their lowest levels in decades. According to the research, the average Australian will each year knock back about 224 cans of beer and 38 bottles of wine. They'll also get through about 17 bottles of cider and polish off four bottles of spirits. But the same statistics also suggest that one-fifth of the Australian population are teetotal, meaning they never drink any alcohol at all. Phil Mercer has the story. One billion people live with a disability. That is according to the World Health Organization. This is a huge figure, roughly 15% of the global population. And it's having a profound effect on how society responds. Well, Monday the 3rd of December is designated by the United Nations as the International Day of Disabled Persons. So earlier I spoke to Dr. Alarcos Cieza from the World Health Organization to find out more about this day. Dr. Cieza there from the WHO and Sharon Jit, just let's remind everybody that the 3rd of December is the International Day of Disabled Persons. Really important to gain awareness for that. You've been watching Newsday. I am Kasia Madeira in London. And I'm Sharon Jit Lale in Singapore. You can stay with us because uh, we'll be taking a look at the market. Forward to that, Sharon Jit. We'll join you shortly. But before we finish with this edition of Newsday, Sharon Jit, is it too early to mention Christmas yet? <laughs> we are.